Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about a KPI you can really use. Now, I've seen a lot of apps come and go over the years, uh, and some of them are still around, that will let you create a dashboard. And, and, and they'll hook into your data in QuickBooks Online and create this gorgeous dashboards that you can use. And if you're the accountant looking to present useful information to your client, a lot of these can be great. Um, I've never been wowed by any of them, frankly, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I can do a lot of these things in Excel with much greater flexibility. In other words, I can sort of bend the data and analyze it and organize it based on my will, whereas a lot of these apps are constrained because they're sort of preset to show certain things and there's no way to get in there and like write a formula like I can do in a spreadsheet that gets it to do something that I very specifically and exactly would like to do. Now. When it comes down to the analysis, a lot of times the dashboards you're going to create are going to show you a lot of the high level stuff. How much cash is in the bank? How much money are we making? All really good and important stuff. And the reality is, in my experience, when you look at this stuff and you're trying to come up with the analysis, let's say you're trying to work as the CFO or the outsourced CFO for the company who's going to be looking at this data, you want to come up with the analysis. And a lot of it's going to boil down to one basic uh, strategy, which is we need to look for ways to increase sales while we control the expenses. And of course, that's great advice. In fact, if you can do that, that's the best way to improve cash flow in any company because that's going to improve your cash flows from operations, which is why we're in business to begin with. Right? Cash flow is king, no question. We don't have to be profitable, but we do have to have positive cash flow. Now, mind you, it's important to understand if you're not profitable and your cash flow is positive, that means that your cash flow is not coming from operations, and that's only sustainable for so long. It's based on how much money the owner has available to put into the business until it can turn things around and, and, and generate cash flows from operations, and or how much available funds you have at your disposal from investors or banks lending you money and so on. You get the picture. So my thought is, as long as most companies are going to land on a, some version of essentially the same strategy, increase sales control expenses to, to, to get the greatest positive impact on cash flow, why not look at a KPI, a key performance indicator that's aimed at helping us determine if we're succeeding at doing that, and if not, how we can start to succeed at doing it. We want to get into the analysis of what can we do to increase revenues, and that's going to mean spending money on marketing. And eventually we'll look at a breakdown, but at first we want to just take a high level view and see all of our marketing dollars that we're spending and how that compares and how that what the relationship is between that and the trend in revenues. In other words, my hope is as I spend more money on marketing, I should see an upward trend in my revenue numbers, right? And, and conversely, if I drop the marketing spend, do I see a related decrease in the revenues? The other thing I want to understand is how long does that take? If I spend marketing dollars this month, do I see the upward increase in revenues happen next month? Does it happen the same month? If we're doing pay-per-click advertising, it should be almost immediate, right? I spend the money now, I get the traffic now, I get the sales now, right? Maybe a few days lag, right? But that should be pretty immediate. Other efforts may take longer before I see an impact on my revenue trend, right? So if I hire a social media manager, for example, and say, hey, your job is going to be to go out there and do outreach, that's a slower play. It's going to take a little longer to build. So I might expect that the money I'm paying that person this month, I might not really see an impact on the revenues until next month or even longer down the line, right? So we want to understand these relationships. And the best way to do that is from something that's visual, from a graph, from looking at trend lines. So let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you exactly how I propose we do this. What I've got here is a very simple spreadsheet laid out. Obviously, if you're going to use this, um, you can run your PL by month in QuickBooks Online, export that, and copy and paste the numbers in from your revenue lines, you know, your revenue totals, and your internet marketing totals. But let's say before we even go there, that we want to actually just model the numbers and, and kind of predict what we expect to see, what we hope to see, right? So I've got this line item in here where you enter the percentage based on how much money you want to spend on marketing uh, tied into the previous month's revenue. So as you can see in January, our baseline, we're just going to randomly spend $1,000 on marketing and we're expecting $15,000 in revenue. Once we have this baseline established, we're going to say take 10% of whatever last month's revenues were and reinvest that into marketing. 
So that's how we get the $1,500 that we'll spend in February. In February, we see $15,150 in revenues. May or may not be related to this. We really need more data to analyze before we can make that determination, right? So here I have a simple formula that just says take the prior month and add 1% to the, uh, to the gain uh, through March. Then when I get out to April, I built in a formula that increases that increase to 5% from 1%. And I copied that out. Again, I'm just throwing numbers out here so we can get this kind of built out. So we can start analyzing what we want the curve to look like. And then we can drop in the real numbers from a QuickBooks Online company, certainly, to see what the actuals look like. And then we can start studying the trends. Then what we'll want to do, once we've got this laid out, is create the chart. So I'm going to highlight, starting from here on cell A2, just above where I've got the revenue, and down to the internet marketing, and I'm going to go all the way across. So I'm highlighting the timeline, which is in my first row, right? And I'm highlighting the two pieces of data that I want to include in my chart. This is just for me to have a driver where I can change the assumptions, and we'll go back and do that, um, about how much of my prior month's revenues get spent on advertising. So I've got to insert and chart. And Google Sheets is pretty smart about figuring this out. It sees what I'm trying to do. I've got my revenue curve in blue and my internet marketing spend in red. And again, I plotted out these numbers intentionally to kind of show something like what I would hope to see in the curve, which is that as I increase my marketing spend, I see a corresponding increase in my revenue curve, right? And so over here, we might say, okay, well, if the trend is going to be a, a greater increase starting in March, right? then that's when I should see a jump in or plan a jump in my marketing spend, right? So I, I increased it to 20%. If I changed it back to 10, just so you could see, you know, you see instantly how that impacts the trend lines in the chart. So here I say 10%, change it to 20, right? And I've got this configured by formula that each month, it just, you know, is set equal to whatever the prior month is. This way, if I change one thing one month, everything from there forward updates. So it's a simple formula. Right. But the idea now, of course, is to take a template like this and start dropping in your actuals. Right. For so as of, as, as of the time I'm recording this, it's April 2022. The month is almost over. So presumably these would be forecasted. These would be the actual dollar amounts that I have for revenue and what I've spent on Internet marketing. And the idea is to just keep tabs on this each month, especially as I accumulate as I accumulate more real data. And then I want to analyze these trends. And the bottom line is if I don't see what I expect to see, again, the expectation is that the more money I spend on marketing, the greater increase I'll see in revenues. But I also want to see what's the lag, right? Does it happen right away? Does it take a month or two or three before I see what might be a corresponding increase in revenue? We don't assume things, but it's good to go into this with some kind of a hypothesis so that I have some idea of what I expect to see. And that will trigger me better when I look at this, especially if I don't see what I expect to see. And then if we start seeing, you know, revenues going down, even though we're spending more money on marketing or bottom line, anything other than what we expect or hope to see, then we can take a deeper look into the internet marketing. So at that point, what we might do is break this number down into how much are we spending on Google advertising? How much are we spending on LinkedIn advertising? How much are we spending on our social media manager? You know, any money that we're spending that totals up to this internet marketing number, now we could break down into the different line items and see each of those separately on this chart so that then we can analyze which things appear to be working, right? The things that seem to show an increase in revenues with an increase in spending on that line item, that's the indicator that it's working. And conversely, if we see something where we've increased spending and we don't see a corresponding increase in revenue, then that could suggest that that's not working. And that starts giving us clues as to where we need to take a closer look and build a strategy around figuring out month over month exactly what we need to tweak in our marketing until we get that formula. And it's not really a science. It really is an art in terms of figuring out what to tweak. It could be, you know, and I've experienced this, and I'm not a marketing guy, but I've experienced this just playing around with it myself where just a slight change in the language on an ad can make all the difference between an ad not having any effect and an ad just popping and going crazy and getting all kinds of traffic coming in, right? So it's really an art. It's a matter of tweaking, changing little things here and there. But having this kind of a KPI that you look at as opposed to the real high-level cash-in-the-bank net income type 
uh, data that most people look at in dashboards and when they're looking at KPIs. Looking at something like this, in my opinion, gives you some real actionable intelligence that you can use to make important decisions that actually might be able to drive that top line for you so that hopefully compared to what you're spending, it flows to the bottom line in a positive way, which as I said in the beginning, ultimately the goal here will be to use data like this to get very specific about reaching the goal of improving cash flows from operations. And as an outsourced CFO, that's like my number one goal for every client is to figure out ways to improve cash flows from operations. When I've done that job really well, that pays for my fees and then some, and it makes clients really, really happy. As always, I hope you learned something here, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.